My mother says that my brother and I were not issued birth certificates, we were issued flight plans. And both of us, we don't have blood in our veins, we have aviation fuel. First time when I was a little kid, probably 10 years old, and my mother took me out to an airport and we got a little ride in some little Piper Gub sometime. And right then, I decided that I wanted to do something significant in aviation and having done it as a pilot. Uh, you look at all those heroes that came back from World War II, the, the fighter pilots and those guys that were in the bombers, that three out of every four were casualties. And then you gotta wonder, those are pretty brave guys. I mean, how can you be the only guy in a squadron that comes back all shot up, and how do you get in another airplane the next day and do that again? How, and who are these people that can do something like that? And so I had to find out for myself. You know, little kid, Dickie Rutan. When you're faced with that, what are you going to do? I had to get up there to see. And so I went into the aviation cadet program. I guess I didn't qualify for pilot. And I went in as navigator. And then after that, I applied for pilot training, graduated number one in my class. Uh, got a fighter to combat and went out and got shot at and uh, I found it very exhilarating. It's extremely addictive because every mission we'd go, I says, wow, that was really exciting. I'm going to mess with him a little more. And so you keep poking the tiger in the eye more and more and finally he breaks through the bars and he eats you alive. And then on one day in August of 1968, then I was messing around up there and did get shot real bad. And uh, Fortunately, I made it out to the water. I figured 105 was enough, especially since I was on fire and I was, I says, you know, if I can just get out to the water and eject and get rescued, I'm not coming up here anymore. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, we got out, Bert talked about flying around the world in a Voyager, and I had no idea that it was even possible. But when he talked about that, this was in 1980, it finally dawned on me, he says, holy bananas. This is gonna, the first around the world unrefueled. Wow. That's a milestone, a major milestone, and it may even possibly be the last milestone. However, with carbon fiber, we could build an airplane. Burke could design it, we could build it, and double the absolute distance record. The Voyager with no money, five and a half years, fighting with my brother over details of the design, uh, trying to find the quarter million dollars worth of carbon fiber to build it, quarter million dollars worth of radios and navigation gear that I needed, all those things. And that's pretty neat, guy, for, for a couple of guys with not, with not two nickels to rub together in the high desert of the Antelope Valley. See, this is where dreams come. That's aviation's hallowed ground out there, that, that dry lake and stuff. A lot of stuff happened that, that we enjoy today. I'm going to be like an eight-year-old kid right now and just ask you, what did it feel like when you touched down on the Voyager? I landed out here at Edwards, and I was a half a million dollars cash in debt. And it felt every bit as good as I always imagined. Hey, it's over. Hey, we What's next for pilot Dick Rutan? I fly all over. I love flying. I still, I'm still a flight instructor. The airplane is, a, of course, a home-built airplane. As you can see, the front of it looks like an eagle. But uh, we looked around in aviation, and the word eagle was already taken. <laughs> so we thought, what the heck, we'll just use a Russian term. Okay. Anyway, bear coot sounds kind of eagle-ish, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And how many <laughs> exist? Oh, there's probably uh, close to 100. Oh, really? And they're a yeah. kit. They're made out of carbon fiber. All right. And it's all molded, so it, it just reduces the workload a lot. OK. And so also, this one has a retractable gear. It cruises about 260 miles an hour. It's got a 300 horsepower like homing in the back. Okay. And uh, it'll go from here to Chicago nonstop easily. See, this is an experimental home build. And the FAA requires us to make a warning. It says this, this aircraft does not comply with the Federal Aviation Standard for Airworthiness. I put my own little label underneath it. That's why it's stronger, safer, more efficient, and more fun to fly. <laughs> I love it.